Millions of people across Indonesia have cast their votes in the world's biggest single-day election. More than 200 million of the country's 270 million people were eligible to cast a ballot. Vote counting is now underway to find out who will replace its outgoing president in an election being closely watched by both the U.S. and China. So joining me now for more is uh, CBS News senior foreign correspondent Elizabeth Palmer. So, Liz, this year, uh, some of the largest democracies in the world are going to the polls, and Indonesia is one of them. We said that both the U.S. and China will be watching this closely. Why is that? Tell us about this election. Well, this is the third largest democracy on the planet, the largest Muslim one. It's a very young electorate. More than 100 million of those voters that you spoke about are under the age of 40. Indonesia is on something of an economic roll right at the moment. It has enormous supplies of nickel deposits of nickel, and it's become a very vital link in the production of electric vehicles globally. It's also a huge player in Indo-Pacific politics, and it's trying to walk a very fine line, not taking sides in the U.S.-China rivalry. And I must say, doing it skillfully, for example, it's participated in joint military exercises with America and its allies in the region and still managed to keep huge amounts of Chinese foreign investment flowing into its development. Now, the front runner in this election is a 72-year-old former military man, former defense minister, Prabo Subianto, and he has publicly committed to staying that economic and political course. So let's talk about this front runner because I think uh, young voters may know him as somewhat of a TikTok phenom, but older voters are going to have perhaps Perhaps different memories about who and what he is. What can you tell us about him? He goes by one name, Prabowo. He's run for president twice before in the past 10 years, so this looks like third time lucky for him. Mm. He is, as I mentioned, a former military man, very wealthy, and with a controversial past for alleged human rights abuses back in the 1990s. They even got him barred from entering the U.S. at one point. He was dishonorably dismissed from the Army in 1998 in connection with the abduction of more than 20 student democracy activists. Thirteen of them have never been found. Mm. Now, Mr. Subianto denies any wrongdoing, but he's on record as saying Indonesia needs an authoritarian leader, and he's mentioned also getting rid of political term limits. Lately, though, as you hinted at, he's had a complete makeover, thanks largely to TikTok, which has played an enormous role in this campaign. He's rebranded himself as a cuddly, cat-loving grandpa mm. who isn't ashamed to cut really awkward, nerdy dance moves on stage at rallies, and it's comp he's gone over as a hit. It's won over a decisive number, it appears, of young Indonesian voters who probably don't remember his uh, earlier, uglier incarnations. Indeed. So, of course, like I mentioned, the world is watching to see the outcome. It's probably going to take a while to count uh, these uh, ballots, considering the number of islands and the number of people. But, uh, uh, Liz Palmer, thank you very much for giving us a little context.